Hello, welcome to YouTube. Um, okay, hi, I am Sarah. I'm a former elementary classroom teacher and a current homeschooling mom of three. We've been homeschooling from the beginning and I have a seven, five, and two year old. Um, you can see more about how we homeschool and all of that jazz over on Instagram and my website. I will link those down below. Okay, so today I am going to be sharing a flip through comparison of Singapore math dimensions in primary 2022, which boy, that's a mouthful. Um, I'm going to flip this around in just a minute and walk you through side by side examples of the same material in both dimensions level 1A and primary 2022 map primary 2022 level 1a and then in a separate video i'm going to compare the primary 2022 teacher guide to the primary 2022 home instructors guide lots of comparisons going on um so just hold these up for you to see so i'll be flipping through dimensions level 1a teacher's guide at uh, student books and side-by-side -side comparison with the new primary 2022 level 1A and student book. Okay, so here is the look inside. Um, I will be flipping through a couple of the same chapter material lesson in Dimensions 1A and primary 2022 um, 1A. So in a separate video, I will do a comparison between the primary 2022 teacher guide and the home instructor's guide. So for today in this video, I will just be comparing the primary 2022 teacher guide to the dimensions teacher guide. And we'll jump into these books in just a minute. Okay, so um, as I said earlier, a little background behind these two. This one on the right is the new release of um, the Singapore math that is made by the Mar Marshall Cavendish Company. So these are the folks that are direct um, from Singapore working with American um, teachers and curriculum folks. Dimensions math is based off of the Singapore math method, but it's created by an American company. And so that can be a little bit confusing. So that's just the main difference um, between who's kind of behind each of these guides. Okay, so let's start with the beginning of both of these. Hold on. Okay. So we have our table of contents and dimensions on the left. I'm gonna keep that consistent throughout these videos. Dimensions on the left, primary 2022 on the right. So we have our contents, table of contents, and you can compare these online. The chapters are a little bit different. So if you're switching, um, definitely look those up. Um, where did I go? With okay, so here we go. So, chapter one, dimensions number to ten, number to numbers to ten. Chapter two, number bonds, number bonds in primary are in part of chapter one. Okay, then we have addition, so addition, addition. Subtraction, subtraction, numbers to 20. And then addition and subtraction within 20. So it's all in one kind of big section here, but it is again then broken down into um, addition and subtraction, whereas in dimensions it's separate chapters. And then at the end, um, we have more word problems in primary 2022 and shapes and dimensions and then dimensions has ordinal numbers and primary 2022 has some length stuff okay one thing that is different about one thing that's different about primary, I'm just going to say primary because primary 2022 20, is a mouthful. 
Uh, one thing that's different about primary is they have this beginning page at the end of beginning of each chapter that's telling us how this material is spiraling through the different grade levels. So you have here, you have looking back at K, and you have looking forward at grade two. There are also STEAM projects that go across the chapters. And so the first project goes through, um, you complete it during chapters one, two, and three. Now, depending on your child, you might be able just to do this all at one time. Let's keep going here. Then we have our chapter openers. They're in a little bit different order, but they kind of have some of the same material. So dimensions starts with your lesson sequence, whereas primary starts with your chapter overview. So here is a comparison of your chapter overviews between dimensions chapter overview and primary chapter overview. Both programs are using the concrete pictorial abstract method. They're just displaying the information differently. Then primary goes into your chapter at a glance. That was at the beginning of the chapter right here in dimensions. This is very much a teacher manual because it has um, all these different components to it. Okay, then we get to our chapter opener. Let's get to our chapter opener on both. Okay, so dimensions, we have our chapter opener over here with our objectives, the activities, and dimensions does use these little symbols for representing um, The activities are foundational, on level, and star. Primary at the end of each lesson has differentiated instruction. That's kind of having their approach to, um, to differentiation. Okay, so here's our chapter opener and dimensions. I have to say, this is much more visually appealing to me. It's much simpler. It's my brain doesn't go blah. I'm a very vi visually sensitive person. So like this appeals to me. This is just a lot on one page. I do, however, prefer the cleanness of their student pages. I like the illustrations better over here in that style, but this is simpler, I think, for the child to see what the lesson is. Um, we have Eng English language support in here because it's a teacher guide. I do like the promoting growth boxes they have throughout. Then another thing that's different about primary is each chapter begins with a recall section. So this is a little bit of that spiraling in, making sure that we're kind of ready to move on with the next lesson. And so that is at the beginning of each chapter, whereas dimensions just jumps right into your lessons. I post it for notes here. All right, let's go to the first lesson. Okay. Both of these lessons are essentially, you know, numbers one up to 10. Checking my notes here. Okay, I really like these um, lesson openers in primary. I like the simplicity of like, this is what we're doing, learn. They have the highlighted terms. These are good strategies for kids to be learning. Dimensions is more of a, I don't know, just kind of look and talk, right? Then we have all of the text here on like the lesson opener. And this thinking part is kind of the dimensions component to that. And then we move into the lesson. They both have this learn section. Okay, dimensions has more games throughout it. They're both called activities. However, I feel like the dimensions games are a little bit more game-like, um, whereas these are more just kind of like moving you through the concrete, you know, hands-on aspect to the Singapore math method. Okay, the end of each primary lesson has this lesson debrief, which is kind of nice. Here's a game here, for example. Um, next number, snap. The end of the primary lesson has the, again, this promoting growth, this growth mindset box, um, which I really like. 
And then it has this really big, clear, differentiated instruction page. And again, Dimensions kind of uses a differentiated approach by having the circle star and the circle triangle and star for your foundational on level and enrichment activities. And this is just very clearly laid out. And this is, would be great for a classroom instructor. Okay, before we jump to another chapter, another thing that we will find in primary that I have not seen in dimensions are these kind of thinking through um, word problems where you're using various heuristics and you're showing your work. And the end of each chapter in primary has this chapter wrap up with a performance task. So this is like working through a problem. And the performance tasks have a rubric for the child to do and for the grown up to do. And then this great progress monitoring piece. Research tells us that it is beneficial for kids to monitor their own progress. This also ties in line with the growth mindset um, and Joe Bowler's work with mathematical mindsets. You also have your project work for the STEAM project. This is the introduction of the work. Um, if you kind of zoom in and look at this, um, it'll tell you that parts of it are to be done after each chapter, parts one and two, parts three. You know, honestly, it's probably better in my opinion just to do it all at once, but again, that depends on your child. Okay, at the end of each chapter in primary, they also have this, um, chapter self-reflection that's very kid-friendly. And again, this goes great with the math mindset work and the growth mindset work. So I really like having this in there. All right, now we're gonna jump to kind of another lesson just to see. Okay, so in primary, we have numbers to 20 broken up into two chapters. And no, we don't, we have it in one, sorry. So here we have numbers to 20 in both chapters. So again, we have our grade level progression, the information about the STEAM work that's going across the chapters, and we have our overview starting off here. Then Dimensions jumps into the chapter opener, or the chapter overview, and Primary Math has their chapter overview and the chapter progression. Primary then goes into the chapter at a glance, whereas that was right here. I kind of like this really simple chart um, as a homeschooling parent. As a teacher, this might be beneficial. Um, it's a little bit too much information for me. We have our materials listed here, which is nice. I love that Dimensions includes these storybooks and a list of black line masters. Then we jump into the chapter opener. Again, I like the style of the illustrations here, but I like the simplicity and straightforwardness of the primary chapter opener. This is a lot of information for me. It is scripted. You've got the blue for the grown up and the pink for the child. You have your promoting growth and your best practice boxes. Here, we just kind of have a brief introduction. There's not scripting in dimensions and we jump into the activities. Then we jump into the lessons. Again, primary begins each chapter with this recall lesson, reviewing some information, and then they go into the actual lesson. Okay, so very similar, you know, type material, just a different visual approach, in my opinion, to get there for this kind of thing. This is a lot for me to look at, and I feel a little overwhelmed looking at it. They start with different approaches. So we're here, we're kind of breaking down. We have the number bond aspect being pulled in right away. And we are both working on groups of tens and more. I like that it starts with the 10 frame in primary. Over here, we're just starting with, you know, bundles. We have the games. Here are the activities for here. To me, this is much easier to read and pick a game and go for it. Whereas this, I kind of have to like 
read through it. It doesn't just jump out right away. And then we have the lesson debrief at the end and there's no debrief on this primary. Okay, we also have these practice on your own components. And then the differentiate and instruction section here and in dimensions that's noted by using the, the circle triangle star system. All right, what else do I have in here? I think that might be it. Let's jump over to the student books really quick. Okay, so let's jump into these. So we have the dimensions textbook workbook and the primary student book, which is an integrated textbook workbook. So with dimensions, and my son has worked in here some, so you'll see that. We have our chapter opener, our think, our learn, our do, and that's the end of that. And then the student would jump over here for like additional independent practice. Okay, and we have the exercises. This is a lot of exercises. I guess it's one page on this page. Some of them are multiple pages. See, like this is lesson two, one, two, three. That's a lot of work. Um, obviously, you don't have to do all of that, right? Like as the teacher or the adult homeschooling parent, um, you can do less if your child doesn't need as much and more if your child needs more. However, sometimes I feel like because it's there, then they feel expected to do it or I feel expected to do it. Let's jump over here into the new primary. Okay, we have our chapter opener. We have the recall section for the student. Again, this really nice um, I can growth, you know, progress monitoring going on here. And then we have the get them both up at the same time. We have the chapter opener here. You would cover this part up. And then this is your learn section. I really like these highlighted words and terms. And then we move into the activity. This is kind of like the do section here. And we have this learn together here. And then the practice on your own comes right after it. Whereas here, you have to kind of, you know, jump to the other book. And then we move into the next lesson. They have, i get to the end of this chapter here. Chapter. It's also confusing, I will say, that they have like 1B, 1A, et cetera, throughout the 1A. That's just tricky for my mind. Okay. Um, here is that big think question we were talking about. Trying to get to the end where they have the other things. Okay, so we have the think section here, the chapter practice, your STEAM page, your rubric for the performance task. Okay, I really like that. So again, it's all integrated here. Um, primary math also has this mastery and beyond if you need to kind of go above and beyond or like just keep at it. They also have a practice book that is separate um, as well. And these are nice because they're like full color, um, nice hole punched if you do the binder system. Okay, so that's that. So I hope that was helpful. Um, <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't know which direction we're going to head. In, I have used dimensions on and off. I have used um, Kate Snow's Math with Confidence curriculum. I have actually, this is my second time purchasing the primary 2022 level 1A. I just um, am all over the place with math. There are some things I really, really like about dimensions. It's very visually appealing to me. It is calming to look at, and it is really easy to see what you need to do at a glance and then do it. 
and I like their illustration style. Primary 2022, though, delivers more, I think, on some of the content um, that is in alignment with the current research on um, growth mindset and thinking about math in the real world and thinking through problems and STEAM work and progress monitoring, all that stuff, which I don't really see in dimensions. So if I'm looking for a one-stop shop, then primary 2022 is going to be a better fit for that. However, just for me personally, opening the page and going through the um, teacher's guide in particular for primary 2022 is overwhelming. There's just a lot of stuff there and a lot of like different colors and different materials. So if you're someone who is easily overstimulated by visual material, um, I would definitely weigh the pros and cons for, you know, one versus the other. Um, there is of course the teacher's guide, um, or the home instructor's guide, excuse me, that is much more streamlined for primary 2022. And again, I'll be doing a comparison of the teacher's guide and the home instructor's guide for primary 2022 in a separate video. Um, so yeah, good luck choosing a math curriculum um, that works for your family. These are, you know, just my opinions um, with my professional experience as a classroom teacher and my personal experience homeschooling. I am definitely not a Singapore math expert by any means. There is a wonderful Facebook group um, that I will link below in the comments, um, in the show notes. I have to get the lingo right. I will link in the show notes below. Um, this Facebook group has so much information for homeschooling parents using Singapore math. The um, person who created the group, Jessica, she actually wrote the instructor's guides, the home instructor's guides for the new curriculum. And so she's got a wealth of knowledge. She also offers um, a lot of content and videos and, you know, help for parents on her own website. And I am not being, you know, paid to say any of this. This is just a resource I am sharing with you.